Who's taking that gold medal home? And last year, this newly renovated park was opened up with Team Japan coming to town, which was an 8 nothing win for Team Japan, and, and certainly a great experience for the Florida Gators on the other side who aspire to one day again wear that red, white, and blue. Haley McClenney will lead it off, and Alabama great against Katie Cronister, and we are underway with the strike. It's a beautiful day for softball that will turn in tonight. About 77 degrees at first pitch. Team USA off to a 6-0 start to this tour. They've outscored their opponents 36-2. McClendy to start this tour leads the team with runs scored. Currently is hitting five straight. Half of her hits have gone for extra bases. Certainly somebody who is a catalyst to the top of the lineup. Four-time All-American. I mean, they have her at the top of the lineup because she's someone that can set the pace for the rest of the girls leading behind them. She just knows how to get on, very dangerous, can lay a bunt down, can hit for power. McClenny rips this on a line to left. Hoover on a back pedal makes the grab. Nice play by Jamie Hoover. First step was in. McClenny's out, and there's one down. That's a hard play for any outfielder to try to make. That is a line drive, and you don't know as an outfielder if it's going to continue to tail up or if it's going to come down. So Hoover does the right thing. She maintains her ground, finds out that it's going to go up, and then she's able to take the step back to get that easy first out. Brings in now Jamie Reed, three-time All-American, went to Oregon. Somebody who has a ton of speed at the top of that lineup, over 100 career stolen bases in her collegiate career. You can see that is where the infield is playing her right now. They are tight, they are in, they are expecting her to drop maybe a bunt, kind of a soft slap. He's and the right fielder Matthews is playing second base essentially. You have Adams now on the left of second. Saw that over the weekend once from Florida. We also saw that last year in the Super Regional round against Tennessee. Some of those quick slapping hitters, Coach Walton electing to bring that right fielder and play a fifth infielder. Well, when you know that that batter does not very, it doesn't often lift it out into the grass, and you know she's going to use the ground, you try to get as much defense as possible in there. Pass back to Cronister, and there's two away. Good start for Katie Cronister. Now we should hear a nice round of applause for Michelle Moultrie, former Gator, who steps in. What a moment for her. I'm sure that heartbeat is certainly racing. I don't know. If anyone knows Michelle Moultrie, you know her Even to be keel, very huh? steady. Very, very steady. It's hard to get a lot of emotion <laughs> out of her. But that's what makes her so successful, is that she just steps in and competes. Lone player on this roster, originally from the state of Florida, a Jacksonville native. You were teammates with Michelle. Like you said, it was very even keel. It was at times just quiet during her Florida career, took care of business. Two-time All-American. was a walk-on to this Florida team. Really an outstanding story was Michelle Moultrie. Yeah, absolutely. Just like you said, a walk-on came in and had to fight to get some playing opportunity, and she did, and she just continued to progress year after year and ended her, her career as the SEC Player of the Year. Back to Cronister again. Three up, three down. Nice start for number 56, Katie Cronister. As Team USA goes down one, two, three, that doesn't happen often. Through a half inning, Team USA nothing, and the Gators come to the plate on the other side. Again, a nice crowd here at KSP tonight.
Welcome back to Gainesville in the top half of the first. Team USA going down one, two, three. Take a look at the starting nine for Gator head coach Tim Walton, who's two career victories away from career win number 900. Of course, the result won't count tonight towards that, but take a look at the starting nine. There are some new additions, most notably Francesca in that third spot, Charlotte Eccles at third base, the transfer from Michigan State. She's had a, a good start to her season. You take a look at some of the constants as well that we've seen throughout the years, most notably at shortstop. Sophia Reynoso has truly been a leader of this team at that shortstop position. And then you look inside the circle, probably one of the best to ever do it. Monica Abbott will get the start for Team USA. The left-hander, former Tennessee Volunteers, already had 27 strikeouts to start this tour. I mean, she's just okay. Um, <laughs> no, she, uh, Monica Abbott is one of the best. And I think as a hitter, it's pretty cool to be able to step in the box and go toe-to-toe -to -toe and face her. She's a fierce competitor. She is going to hum that ball in. She's going to just truly bring the heat, bring the fire. Her ball jumps on you very fast as a hitter because she throws it so hard, but also because she's extremely tall. So you feel like she's right on top of you. You almost wonder if part of that smile from Hannah Adams is the fact that she's getting set to step into the box against somebody like many in this Gator lineup and throughout the sport that they idolize somebody like Monica Abbott or a Kat Osterman. This is, it's got to be a surreal experience for everybody on that Gator team. Yeah, no doubt. And and because all these Gators are competitive, they're wanting to, they're going to want to try to figure out a way to get a hit. It's going to be difficult as a lefty on lefty against Abbott and against someone like Osterman, but... You just kind of have to try to chip away and see the pitch early. Abbott, a part of the 2008 silver medal team in Beijing. Went 3-0 in that stint in the Olympics. And in a way for her, this is a chance at redemption to get that gold medal here in 2020. Was the youngest player on that roster in 08. And of course, Francesca, the, the uncertainty of when softball was going to enter back into the Olympics, uh, that was something for many of, the, many of these athletes that even made it even more important to make this 2020 roster because you don't know when it's going to come back into the Olympics now. You know, we're talking about over 10 years now that it hasn't been in the Olympics. And, and it, it, you know, I'm going to say it's, it was disappointing. It's disappointing for any softball player to know that they wouldn't be able to don that USA uniform. There's a strike to Hannah Adams. It won't be a part of the 2024 Paris Olympics. So this is a chance for a lot of these athletes to, to capitalize on that opportunity, opportunity they do have for a gold medal. And you kind of said it too for, for that redemption of trying to get that gold medal back because Team USA lost in 08 to Team Japan. They want to bring it back home. They're not happy about that. You still talk to someone like Jenny Finch or Kat Osterman, and they're still upset about that. Yeah. Adams foul tips into the glove. So Abbott picks up an early strikeout, and there's one away. And you're going to see that a lot with Monica Abbott. She gets her fair share of strikeouts, and she gets it with that pitch. That is her rise ball. That is her bread and butter pitch. And because she has the speed, it's so hard to read as a batter. I mean, when you're facing Abbott, you truly have to think, see the ball down. Your eyes cannot get big whatsoever. But as a righty power hitter, those are the batters who usually find their most success off of her. And if you can get on top of something, the ball just goes. Over 2,400 career strikeouts in her Tennessee career. I think she even, uh, I think she broke Kat Osterman's. Kat Osterman was the one who held the NCAA strikeout record and she broke that A little friendly competition. Yeah. <laughs> And the compliment that those two will be, you have you know, the power of, of Monica Abbott, 
the rise ball, and then you go to Kat Osterman, who's more of a spinny pitcher that, that does it a different way. So you have that big one-two complement at the top of the staff. I don't, yeah, I feel bad for their opponents. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the field a little bit later in the Olympics this year. Kendall Lindemann, second year as a Florida Gator, steps to the plate. First two years as a Minnesota Golden Gopher. At 15 home runs last year, first year in the SEC. Count now two and two. Now that's a good eye from Lindemann right there. That's Abbott trying to see if she's going to chase it. And if she did chase that, you just know that she's going to continue to go higher with that rise ball. So now someone like Abbott is probably going to try to go back to that rise, but keep it a little bit lower more baitable. Right at the knees for strike three. Two up, two down, and two Ks for Monica Abbott. And that is a tough pitch uh, as a hitter to try to hit because you're not expecting to see that low pitch from her. But anytime you see something low from Monica Abbott, you have to be swinging because you know it's probably going to be something good just on the lower part of that zone. That just gets right at the kneecaps. I'm sure many hitters throughout the years have had that helpless feeling against the left-hander. Here's Charla Eccles, first year as a Gator. Transfer from Michigan State. Had a great opening weekend. Charlotte Eccles, 7 of 15 over the weekend, couple of home runs, seven ribbies. What a way to start your Gator career. You know, people just keep asking, like, how, how are they going to replace Amanda Lorenz? How do you replace that power, that, that leadership? And, and you don't. You can't replace someone who is, you know, one in a million with, them, with a Lorenz. But someone like Eccles could come in and start to fill some of those shoes when it comes to production. What a start for Monica Abbott. The power on display strikes out the side in the bottom half of the first. One of the most dominant pitchers to ever do it in the sport. Her talent's on display in Gainesville, no score through one. No scores. We head now to the second inning. It is pretty much to capacity. Presley Stadium, as you would expect, and we'll expect throughout this tour for Team USA. But like we said, it's a good chance for Gator Nation plus some of the younger generation to see the stars of the game. And it's like standing room. We got them all out on yeah. the brim, sitting down in left field. Stacy Nelson Plaza popping. <laughs> <laughs> you got some fans up in the coaches' offices. There's Ali Aguilar. Lead it off for Team USA. With a start for Katie Cronister, by the way, sitting down Team USA 1 2 3 in that first couple of comebackers right to the pitcher. 
We kind of talked about it a little bit, but Chronister is someone who likes to work that lower part of the zone. She's got a heavy drop ball, and because she's from the left side and spinny, it's hard for batters to pick up and stay through the zone with it. They quickly want to get there and then pull off. Right back to Chronister again, who snares it. One away. The field work from Chronister today. Everything right back at her. Well, because she stays in that lower part of the zone, she does produce a lot of ground balls, and that's what she's done. You see this ball right off of the bat from Aguilar. Chronister going up to get it, to get the out. So Chronister retires all four that she sees. Three of those ground balls right back to her. Now Coach Walton goes to the bullpen. We'll bring in Natalie Lugo. The smile from Katie Chronister. The hug there from Jolene Henderson. A Cal Graydon. That's got to feel good for her confidence because in a Florida Gator uniform, it's, at times it's been up and down for Katie Chronister, but they're expecting her again with the exit of Kelly Barnhill from this staff. They're expecting her, among others, to play bigger roles in that pitching rotation this year. Your coach Tim Walton said that they don't have one arm that they can rely on. They don't have two. They need to rely on all five pitchers and to expect all five pitchers to make an appearance in every single game. And, and they're all very different. They all complement each other very nicely, and they all have different out pitches, which can lead to success in that type of environment of bringing in a different pitcher every, every few innings. Valerie Arioto will step to the plate against Natalie Lugo. So a, a ton of work over the weekend. Last time inside the circle got a start against South Florida, went five and two-thirds innings. Picked up the victory. And I think primarily with the exit of Barnhill, the one who has to take the biggest leap this year is number 10, Natalie Lugo. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and she's the one that has the most experience as well amongst the, this entire Gator pitching staff. She's seen the most innings. She's faced the best competition. She's had her back up against the wall the most time. So she's going to have to lead that way from the experience factor. But truly, whoever is going to kind of walk away at the end of the season being the number one pitcher is still debatable. And it's interesting, too, because a lot of these other pitchers last year didn't see much time because of the circumstance. Coach Walton was going to give the ball to Kelly Barnhill as much as he could, especially in the postseason. As there's a strike to Arioto. And for Barnhill, she pitched probably about 85% of the innings last year. So these are pitchers that don't have a ton of experience. So they're going to go through those growing pains this year. And I love what Coach Walton said about that is, now that Barnhill has departed, it's actually made the rest of the pitching staff become more competitive because they know they have to see more innings in order for their team to succeed. So they are ready for that challenge. Off speed, strike three. Lugo comes in, gets the K. Good start for Gator pitching. Now Lugo fell behind Arioto 3-0, was able to get that strike on the inside corner, another strike on the inside corner, and then surprise Arioto with the changeup. You see hard, hard, hard as a hitter, and then with three balls, she goes with the changeup. That just shows how much confidence Lugo has in that pitch. Now stepping in, Hannah Flippin. Arioto not in love with that call. Smoke deep to left field, and that goes over the head of Jamie Huber. Flip it around first, and the throw not nearly in time, so that's the first hit on either side. Comes off the bat of Hannah Flippin. And two out, two bagger. Well, Lugo went back with the changeup. She gets that first strike and then tries to bring that off speed to get the balance off of Hannah Flippin, but she hung that changeup way too much over the sweet part of the plate. Flippin easily going to take that down left field line. Now Amanda Chedester stands in, former Michigan Wolverine. From Allen Park, Michigan, two-time Big Ten Player of the Year. 
all up and down this lineup. You have Conference Player of the Years, USA Softball Player of the Years. All-American after All-American. Yeah, there's definitely no easy spot in the lineup against Team USA. You have to be ready every single pitch if you are in that circle tonight. Every pitch has to be perfect. And how about the process, too, to dwindle down this roster to the 15 players that are going to play, plus you add the replacement players, so 18 in total. But for Ken Erickson, I'm sure it was a grueling process to whittle down this roster to who you were going to bring to Tokyo. No doubt. It's almost like, can we have two Team USAs? But that's just me being selfish. Good job, Jordan. Yeah, but a lot of the times it doesn't come it doesn't come down to what how you perform in the professional league or how you perform collegiately it's about how you perform at the tryouts and who you're going to be facing in the olympics and how you could bring strength to that roster bounce to reynoso go to first for the final out of the inning so team usa gets the first hit of the night a hand of flipping double a nice job by natalie lugo to retire the side. We're still scoreless as we now head to the home second. Gators will take the bats when we return to KSP. Going now to the bottom of the second. Again, not a, a seat to be had tonight here at the newly re renovated Katie Seashore Presley Stadium. And it's a cool wrinkle of all of this. We mentioned the three Gators coming back and Kelsey Stewart, Aubrey Monroe, and Michelle Moultrie. The fact they get to play in this newly renovated park, it's, it really is, a, it's added kind of to the experience of them coming back here. I actually texted Aubrey before coming here and asked her, tell me what it's like to play in the new stadium. It might be the same field and maybe kind of the same outlook when you're looking from the batter's box, but the feel of the stands and how many people are here is just nuts. Jordan Roberts leads it off for the Florida Gators, followed by Jordan Matthews and Julia Cottrell. Monica Abbott did exactly what Monica Abbott has done her whole career, struck out the side in the first. When you're facing someone like Monica Abbott, like a Kat Osterman, you know that they're going to get their strikeouts. So from an offensive perspective, you need to understand that you might be one of those victims, but it just takes one swing, and it just takes trying to stay as short as possible to try to put the ball in play to get on base. How about the opening weekend for Jordan Roberts? She was 3 of 17 at the plate, but all three of those hits were home runs. They're going to need that production in terms of power from Jordan Roberts this year. Had an issue with strikeouts last season. 
Had a two home run game against Georgia State. That was the first of her career. Heavy swing and a miss, and another K from Monica Abbott. Yeah, that was a great at bat from Jordan Roberts, though. She really worked that count from Abbott. And it made, she made Abbott work and go outside with that pitch. And, and that's a pitch that you want to try to swing at. So she didn't get too big and swing at a, at a rise ball. That's going to be a strike that she just couldn't catch up with. So to me, if I'm Jordan Roberts, I'm thinking, okay, that was a good quality at bat. You might have struck out, but you still had a good at bat. Now how can you learn from that and try to produce in your second? And as a great hitter, which you were, um, you do that kind of mental inventory of what you see first time through. And that's why numbers radically change second and third time through lineups for pitchers. Well, you start to understand what what they start to go with and what their trends are. So if you, you, you start off like 01 or 02, then you see the next pitch she's going to go, okay, that's her out pitch, and that's what she wants to throw me when she's ahead. So you keep that in the back of your mind. You know, sometimes if you go up against an Abbott and you, and you see a high rise ball right at the zone, you're thinking, okay, she doesn't, she doesn't think I can lay off this pitch. She wants to see how high she can go with that. And there's strike three. Matthews down looking. Five up, five down. Another K in your scorebook. I can't tell you how hard it is for a lefty batter to try to read the spin off someone like Abbott. It, it, it truly seems impossible the first few times you face her, and it takes a lot of experience against her to try to be successful. How about now the, the freshman Julia Cottrell stepping to the plate against Monica Abbott? I like it. She's not afraid. <laughs> Takes that big first swing. You kind of draw the parallels between sports, right? So if you're a young basketball star and all of a sudden you're lining up across the way from, say, LeBron James or, or Michael Jordan, it's, it has that type of feel to it. That's what makes this so cool. And I completely agree with you. I, rem I remember when I got drafted to play in, in the MPF professionally and Kat Osterman was going to be my teammate. And I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to be a teammate with an Olympian. Like, that's just really cool. And how about the windup from Monica Abbott? A little bit different than, than what you see? A little bit dramatic towards the end right prior to delivery? Yeah, she starts super small, and because she's so tall, by the time she releases this, I mean, she's right on top of you as a batter. And almost clips Cottrell, three and two. Gators looking for their first base runner, and for somebody not to strike out. Here. She starts very low. She kind of hesitates right in the middle to come down, and then she just expands. You talk about that stride length. Heavy swing and a miss, and another strikeout from Monica Abbott. Six up, six down, six Ks for Team USA's Monica Abbott. Through two, no score here at KSP.
And what a way to start a new softball year in St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. 17 teams, 41 games in four days. You have five teams that were in last year's Women's College World Series. Team USA will be there. They'll play three exhibition games. And, of course, you can get them on the ESPN family of networks. But you get a lot of great matchups in this Invitational. It's going to be a lot of fun to see some of the stars of the game play in that Invitational. I personally got a babysitter to watch my kids so I can just binge on college softball. You can't miss this opportunity to watch these matchups. That's dedication right there <laughs> from Francesca Nea. There you heard the round of applause for Aubrey Monroe. Catcher on a couple of national championship teams for the Florida Gators. Soft flared shot to Eccles, and there's one away. Aubrey Monroe, somebody who was incredibly clutch in her time as a Florida Gator, was two times a part of the All-World Series team and, and had a really clutch hit in the World Championships in 2018 in that gold medal game against Japan. Had the ground rule double in the 10th that helped tie that game, and Kelsey Stewart walked it off as Kelsey Stewart steps to the plate. When you say a name like Aubrey Monroe, the biggest thing that sticks out to me is her heart, her work ethic. Those are two intangibles that you can't teach, and that is why she has had such a successful career and why she's wearing red, white, and blue this summer. Well, here's now Kelsey Stewart, also a part of those two national championship teams, all-time hits leader at Florida, along with stolen bases, second in batting average. Think of two of the all-time great Gators offensively. You have Kelsey Stewart at the plate and Amanda Lorenz who's in the Gator dugout right now as a student assistant. As Stewart works a walk, second base runner of the night for Team USA. I think you, when you evaluate the Gator pitchers to this point, Francesca, they, they certainly have, have not been afraid against this lineup to start. Personally, I, I love how much they're locating their pitches because they know that they can't leave the ball on any of that white part of the plate. But someone like Kelsey Stewart took advantage of that. She has a very keen eye. She knows her strike zone well, which is why she was able to produce that walk. And, and Coach Ken Erickson has her in that nine hole because she's almost like a leadoff batter. You know, she was a leadoff when she played here at Florida, but she can do so much at the bottom of that lineup to turn it over and to get McClenny, who seems to always get a hit when she's up to bat. McClenny lined out to left in her first at bat. You get a lot of similar stories and when players found out that they made the final roster of, of this 2020 team and, and Haley McClenney was FaceTiming with her parents when she found out the news and you almost get the sense that this is similar kind of trend with a lot of these players. They're always on their phones when, when they hear the news they get a text message from, from a friend or a family member when they find out the news. Again, a dream come true for so many of these players. As Stewart takes off, throw down to second, and will be ball four, so McClenny will be on base. Yeah, to me, it almost seemed like that was one of those like unintentional, intentional walks, yeah. trying to produce the easy force out at third, well, especially if you looked at the speed that Stewart had as, on second and following by McClenny at first. Now, these are fast base runners, so trying to just produce that easy force out at third. Infield in again, once again, for Janie Reed. Last time with nobody on in the first inning. They had five infielders. They brought Matthews in from right to play second base. Here we go, here we go. 
such a good pitch from Lugo there, getting that big swing and miss from Reed. That's a pitch that she's going to want to continue to throw, keep it away from Reed, the lefty, keep it slow, try to produce a little soft dribbler. Broked back up the middle for a base hit. Stewart gets the red light at third as the throw comes in on a line from Caraway. Now the bases are loaded with one out. And that's what we were saying what Lugo could not do was leave that ball too much over the white for Reed to barrel that up and stay through that plane and just being able to work that middle. You can see the catcher, Roberts, is trying to get that ball way more outside, and you saw her glove float back over the middle of the plate. And how ironic, too. Base is loaded. Former Florida Gator Michelle Moultrie coming to the plate. Chance to drive in the game's first run. So two walks and a single in this inning given up by Natalie Lugo. We mentioned the story of Michelle Moultrie, a walk-on originally with the Florida Gators, able to earn a roster spot. Only hit 261 her first year in, in 2009, but her junior year hit 443, just progressively got better and turned into an All-American. Slowly tapped back to Lugo, shovels home for the force out. And now there's two gone. See Moultrie just reaching for that pitch, trying to put it in play. And this is the athleticism from Lugo in the circle, being able to maintain her athleticism. This is a pitch or a ball that's hard to try to stay down on, but she does so and keeps the pre doesn't have the pressure on her to make that mistake. Up to Ali Aguilar here with two outs. Mentioned the start Team USA has had on this tour, 6-0. They've outscored their opponents 36-2. And this is a moment, if you're the four hitter for Aguilar, you cannot get out of this inning without getting a run. You have to try to produce somehow with bases loaded. Back up the middle, Reynoso on a dive, can't get it. One run will score in McClenny as Reed scores as well. Two runs in, a two-run single for Ali Aguilar. Here with two outs in the third, and Team USA is on top. And Aguilar just keeping it simple, not trying to swing too big. She just gets this pitch from Lugo on the outside corner. It's elevated, and she stays through the zone. All of their hits right now are coming right through the middle of the part or middle of the part of the field. So they are zoning in and they're seeing these pitches from Lugo well. So Aguilar finally breaks through. Gives Team USA a 2-0 lead. Oh so close to Reynoso, the shortstop for the Gators. Almost got there on a dive to keep it in the infield. That clips Arioto, so the base is loaded once again, and Lugo in all worlds of trouble right now. There still is two outs. You see this pitch from Lugo just gets away from her. Arioto not happy about it hitting the ankle. That does not feel good. <laughs> As you see Reynoso, that, that senior leader out there, calling timeout to talk to her pitcher. And this is where Lugo needs to try to get better this year. It seems like when her back is up against the wall, she sometimes can get that big out pitch, but other times not. And this is where she needs to grow as a player. Bash foul by Hannah Flippin. And again, that's part of that experience factor 
last year, Lugo and the rest of this pitching staff behind Kelly Barnhill were not put in a ton of high leverage moments, especially in SEC play and NCAA tournament play. So you almost have to build that as a pitcher, the ability, the ability to get big outs in big situations. Back up the middle again into center field. This will bring in more runs as Moultrie touches home. The throw not in time. Aguilar scores. Now four runs in in the inning. A two-run single from Hannah Flippin. And it's 4-0 Team USA. Well, the patience that Team USA is showing against Lugo is what's allowing them to be successful. Just letting that ball get over that white part of the plate, not swinging out of the pitches, out of the zone. And you even see that last pitch from Lugo just caught the corner. But that's, that's enough for someone who's as talented as Hannah Flippin to send it right back up the middle. Now Amanda Chittister, it's up to her here with two outs to add on to this 4-0 lead. Now that's a pitch Lugo needs to start throwing more. Keep it low in the zone, let it bottom out so then they cannot get extended and get those doubles. First Lugo going outside that time, trying to paint the inside corner. It's Amanda Chittister did not make the 2019 Team USA roster. That's one of my favorite stories with Amanda Chittister is that she was someone who was on Team USA for a number of years, did not make the roster last season, and then worked so hard to get the invite this past, this past winter and then gets on the roster for the Olympic team. That's just so much heart. That's just so big, so huge. I love that. Swings and misses. Lugo gets a big strikeout that ends the inning, but... In the stands at Team USA, four runs on three hits and two left. Skaters have some work to do offensively. So we're through two and a half. Team USA up four nothing. First, it was Ali Aguilar bouncing one right back up the middle. Soon to be followed two batters later by Hannah Flippin with a two-run single. Four nothing, Team USA. Back here at KDC Show Presley Stadium, Team USA a four-run at top of the third inning. That's a, a nice place, Francesca, to watch a ball game right beyond that left field fence. You have a pretty good vantage point. Last year was you got a chance to kind of sit right behind Amanda Lorenz and, and watch games, and you get a lot of new places where you can watch games. We mentioned this. You have fans out beyond the center field wall, extending all the way towards the berm in the right field corner. There's a lot of places you can go to watch the game in this renovated ballpark. 
personally, my favorite location is in Coach Walton's office. Yes. From that from that balcony area. I think it was a double header against Alabama last year where Beth Mullins and Michelle Smith did game one. We did game two, and you went and sat up in, in the offices area during the, in the uh, left field corner I in did game it. one. I did, yes. Got to catch the game. I, I was pregnant at the time, so I took a little nap as well. <laughs> <laughs> and there is that area that we were talking about that is a VIP suite. And it is pretty sweet yeah. to be punny. What is the approach for a hitter now against Monica Abbott? Again, it's it's a tough, tall task. She struck out the first six she's seen. Make it seven. Well, from a lefty, it's extremely hard to try to face her because, like I mentioned, the spin that she has and the velocity that she that she comes at you. But you need to try to see the ball as small as possible. And when I say small, you the ball's going to come after you come on you quickly. It's going to come right on top of you. And so you really have to think this pitch needs to be right in this area. And you have to let it travel to you. And it's hard to explain. And maybe if I was better at my job, I could explain it better. <laughs> but I almost have to close my eyes and try to feel how you need to succeed off of her because it's, it's very difficult. The, the velocity that she brings it to you at you can find yourself fa failing very easily because you try to swing too big. It's almost like when you decide to trigger, you need to continue to focus a little bit harder and stay on that path to get to contact. Here's somebody who's always had a short, compact swing, Sophia Reynoso. Does it also help, too, the Gators have had so many years of facing Kelly Barnhill in practice just with that the high-velocity rise that Barnhill had? It certainly helps, but you know what? One of the reasons why Abbott is who she is is because not only does she have that strong velocity of the upper 70s, but the spin, you know, the movement that she has on it, it it's just incredible. Another strikeout for Monica Abbott. Eight up, eight down. And what's really What's really interesting about Abbott is that when she played collegiately and maybe four years after that, she didn't have a changeup. All she relied on was that rise ball. But as she got older, she realized that she needed to bring in that changeup every once in a while because people were just sitting on her fast stuff. And as someone who has had to face her for four years, when she learned how to throw that changeup, it, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't fair. Yeah. And how about, we talked about the veteran pieces of this roster and, and Monica Abbott and, and Kat Osterman. How much does that help in that locker room because they've experienced the, the Olympics? How much does it help these young players? Oh, it helps them tremendously. They, Abbott and Osterman, they know what the Olympic stage feels like and they can reiterate that too and regurgitate it to their, their teammates, their players, and tell them exactly what they can expect. Strikeout number nine. Dominance on display in Gainesville from Monica Abbott. Incredible display of power and precision from number 14. Through three, Team USA leads by four.
Back here in Gainesville, top of the fourth, Team USA leads by a 4 to nothing score. Now we head towards the Gator dugout and talking with Gator head coach Tim Walton. So, Coach, overall, I mean, this is a great experience for your program just to see the amount of fans that come out for this game. Just overall, how would you describe this experience for your team? No, it's great. You know, it's really, really proud to see all the fans in the stands and the number of people that came out not only to see the Gators but to support Team USA and our, you know, our three former Gators. But all 18 players in that dugout, what a great, uh, what a great honor and a great tribute to them. Hey Coach, this is Francesca here. I know you mentioned this is great to try to compete with Team USA to get them ready for the Olympics, but you're competitive. What are the adjustments that you're trying to get your players to make off someone like Monica Abbott? Yeah, you know, you know, you faced her before and hit a home run off her before, if I'm not mistaken, in the MPF. But I think overall, the, the just how good she is, her, her velocity, her location, her spin, She's one of those pitchers that just has it all, and I think the key for us is just getting the right timing. And when she goes down to that pause at the bottom of the windup, you know, really hard to pick it up and really hard to get things going. So we got to do a better job in that. And uh, if we can do that, make contact. You can hear, you know, when you get contact with Monica, the ball goes. But you know, that's a lot easier said than done. Uh, she's really good. Well, coach, appreciate you yeah, taking thanks, the time guys. to talk. It's certainly a celebration for the sport. So thank you so much, Gator head coach Tim Walton former player Aubrey Monroe to lead it off here for Team USA. Like I said, easier said than done. And he made sure to throw in the fact that you hit a home run off of Monica Abbott. And he left out all the strikeouts I had against her too. <laughs> uh. So also before the game, the, the three former Gators getting some, some orange and blue cleats for the game. I know, if they were sneakers, I was yelling down, I'm a size 10. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. You're, you're... This was in the pregame ceremony. Tim Walton exchanging the lineup card with three former Gators. This never feels good as a hitter when you hit it right back into that shin. It, it's actually, it's extremely painful. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It does not feel good. Her foot is ringing right now. That is why the catcher, Roberts, is calling timeout just to give Monroe a little bit more to get the, a little bit more time to get the feeling back in that foot. It's also part of this long six month tour that Team USA is, is embarking on is everyone's got to stay healthy. That's also yeah. part of it too. And it's a it's a long road before the start of the Olympics, so you want to make sure that everybody is 100% heading towards Tokyo 2020. Lugo going right back at her with that inside pitch, the same pitch that she fell off right in her leg. As And any time you hit a ball into your leg, the last thing you want is a pitch that's going to be on you because it might happen again. No fear from number 10 in the circle. Right down the middle. Lugo picks up her third K. And this is what's going to make Lugo successful this season is if she can locate that changeup, if she can keep it on the lower part of the zone, which is what she does against Monroe to get that K, her second of this game. Now we get a chance to see the freshman Riley Trilicek as Lugo comes out to a round of applause. Certainly a great thrill for her to face some of the best in the game. And now for a youngster like Riley Trilicek, last time inside the circle threw a complete game no-hitter. Don't think she'll throw a no-hitter in however long she pitches tonight, but it's a, this, I'm sure, a thrill for a freshman to come into this game. Not only a thrill, but, you know, we've been saying it all game. She is a competitor. She played for the, uh, the junior, Team USA junior team this summer. So she's looking at this team, this roster, as eventually I want to be there. I want to be on the opposite side, coming back to my alma mater in the red, white, and blue. We have three members of this current Gator roster that were members of that junior national team. You mentioned Trilicek, along with Julia Cottrell, the catcher, and Charla Eccles. Overall, Francesca, what were your thoughts on, on Lugo's stuff tonight? 
I felt like she got stronger as she started facing more more batters. And and again, if she can locate that changeup in the right count, she's going to find her success. She's just missing that one consistent out pitch. And if she can become dominant with it, she will have a successful season. Dater's relying a lot on her and a lot on Riley Trilicek, who, if you talk to anybody around this program, they mention that this fall, Trilicek probably had the best fall of any pitcher. So high expectations for her coming into this year. And she's someone who's going to, again, she's going to work in that lower part of the zone and try to produce a lot of ground ball out. So her defense always has to be ready to make that play. I like to call her drop ball a heavy drop ball. It just kind of kind of comes on you quickly and it just falls off the table. Bounce slowly towards Adams, the glove shovel for the out. And we said the defense has to be ready. And Stewart just tapping that ball into play. The pitcher, Trilicek, wasn't sure if Adams was going to get it right away. So she was hesitant to it. But because of the veteran experience from the second baseman, Adams, she came in and basically tackled it and got the out. Back to the top of the lineup and with plenty. And, and for this Gator team defensively, it's where they never disappoint. Pitching and defense has always been the moniker for this program, but about as solid a, of a middle infield as you'll find in the country of Reynoso and Adams at shortstop and second, respectively. And it seems like in the last three years, two years, they've always led the country with their, with their defense. Last year, nation best in fielding percentage. And that's what you ask for when you don't have, you know, those big strikeout pitchers. You had Barnhill, was a, who was a strikeout pitcher, but now we keep talking about the Gators. They have a staff. They have five pitchers, all different types of out pitches, but all of them produce a lot of ground balls, a lot of a lot of ways for your defense to help you out and get those outs. I know. Plenty tonight is lined out to left. Also walked and scored in that four-run third. Nice snare by Trilicek. Nice start to the night for the freshman Riley Trilicek as Team USA goes down one, two, three. Nice response after a four-run third. Gators back to the plate on the other side. Difference right now, a four-run third inning from Team USA. There you see four runs on four hits. Skaters trying to get the bats going. Not easy, though. Monica Abbott has faced nine batters. She's struck out nine batters. But let's take a look at this Olympic field, Francesca, because it's, it's a six-team field. It's it's not given like maybe it has been in years, years past where Team USA and Japan are, are the heavy favorites, but you look at some of the other teams, Team Canada has your friend Daniel Laurie on it, who, who has been a dominant pitcher, obviously, um, since she stepped inside the circle. We look at Mexico, Australia, Italy. There's a lot of teams that can contend for that gold medal this year. 
And I have to I agree with you. There there's a lot of there's a lot of competitiveness that's going to be in the Olympics this summer, and I don't know who the number one's going to be when you talk about Team Canada and Team Mexico. You know, in the past, Team Mexico, I don't think they've ever really put together a competitive team, but in, in my eyes, they're someone who's kind of shown up with a ton of p players who actually played for Team USA for their, for the, um, in the past few years, but didn't make this roster, so then they found their nationality with Team Mexico. But we talk about veteran status, we talk about people that have been there before, and that's a lot of the players from Team Canada. They played in the 08 Olympics. When you talk about Danielle Laurie, um, Gen Jennifer Saline, these are people that know what it feels like to be on that stage. And I think that's when Ken Erickson put together this roster, you can tell he put an emphasis on versatility and the amount of positions that each player can play. I mean, that's going to become useful when you play these really tough teams in this Olympic field. Well, when you play in those Pan Am games during the summers, you, you see your competition, so you know who, what you're facing and who you're up against. And that's when experience is, what you, is where, where you want it. That's why it's big that you have Abbott and you have Osterman who have, who have that, that medal experience. Slowly bounced towards third, had a wicked spin, should be a hit, would be the first of the night. Kelsey Stewart couldn't handle it, had some crazy spin on it, and the Gators have a base runner for the first time tonight. Well, we talked about how are you going to get a hit off of Monica Abbott, and Hannah Adams is the first one to figure it out. You see her, let, she lets that ball travel just an extra inch deeper so she can get her hands on top of it. She was still jammed, which is why that ball had a lot of English on it and Stewart unable to handle it, but she still made the first adjustment from an offensive standpoint. Officially an E5. You figure Kelsey Stewart would get some, some home cooking here at Florida. Did add some tough spin on it. If, I've always been told if it hits the glove, you, yeah. should, make, you should make the play. <laughs> I'm sure Kelsey Stewart thinks that too. So the no-hitter remains intact. One thing Coach Walton said is just trying to get pitches and better counts, and that was it right there. That's the pitch that Lindemann has to be swinging on. You don't get that pitch often from Abbott, and when you do, you've got to capitalize. Line right to first, Adams smart gets back to not wander too far off the bag. Arioto with the grab. That's the same pitch in Lindemann's first at bat that she took, thought it was going to be a ball, but it was a strike. And this time she makes the adjustment, gets enough contact for a hard line drive, but doesn't have enough rotation behind it to lift it out for a hit. See a meeting inside the circle. So we have Kehlani Ricketts, who's been warming up in that Team USA bullpen. There you take a look at Ricketts. Nice crowd, and, and that's, again, another nice part of this ballpark. You get to see some of the pitchers warming up in that bullpen. We take a look tonight at what Monica Abbott has done. Again, no hits, but nine strikeouts. Struck out the first nine, and that came to the plate. Just pure dominance from the veteran of this roster. Trying to win Olympic gold for the first time in her career. As her number retired at Tennessee. Runner takes off. 
Throw is well wide, hits the runner. You know, Aubrey Monroe known for a bullet behind the plate, but I think she was just caught off guard that Hannah Adams was going. You see her go for her knee. She has a quick transfer, but it seems like her, her arm just kind of got blown away outside to make an inaccurate throw. This one will get out of play. Time is called and new softball for Monica Abbott. Abbott's someone that likes to stick to her routine. She doesn't like to get time called on her. She is very, like she has that routine. She has to stick to it. Gets a little rattled if it gets messed up. We talk over her about being a veteran, but she's also been playing over in Japan since she graduated from Tennessee. So that's over 10 years. Missing in to Eccles. Sorry, I was going to say, she's not the only one who plays overseas uh, in the Japan League. You have first baseman Valerie Arioto. You have Ali Aguilar, the shortstop. A lot of people go over there to Team Japan to continue yeah. to compete. And the options you have once you leave collegiate softball, of course, the MPF is, is trying to grow here in the United States. You mentioned playing overseas in Japan. And what this team just means overall to the growth of the sport and possibly, in a way, helping those leagues by just growing the popularity. The line drive out to short is handled by Aguilar for the second out. I love the excitement from the fans when they're getting contact right now because it hasn't happened up to this inning. But we're just seeing the adjustments from the Gators finally come to fruition here. First contact into the field of play that we've seen in this game has come in this inning. A couple of line outs for Lindemann and Eccles. Adams, the lone base runner tonight, reaching on an E5. And it swings like that against Abbott, where she, she knows that she can kind of get you on that rise ball. If you can make the adjustment and let the ball travel just an extra inch, just a little bit deeper, you see it longer and you don't get baited on that pitch. What was the pitch that you hit the best in your career? You could just eye up the best. I don't know. Sometimes it just felt like whatever I got on, I got on time with. <laughs> Now you had a bigger swing than yeah. than most, but it worked for you. Come on, Jordan. I really liked swinging at high pitches. I don't know why. I just couldn't. I couldn't lay off. Couldn't of lay it. off. Yeah. <laughs> so I just had to learn how to hit it. Anything that was pitched down the middle. I mean, that's child's play. I just would let it go. Yeah. Anyone can hit that, right? Hitting drop balls are always is always fun because you get to yeah. try to change the spin off of it. Kind of lift it off the ground. I don't know. There's beauty in every pitch to try to hit. Job right here, huh, Jordan? 
I've seen home run swings going back to some of the old tape where you've gone down to, to one knee. I mean, you had some really heavy hacks in your days. One of the best home run hitters in program history. When we talk about home run hitters, those batters never usually think they're home run hitters. We just go up trying to make contact, trying to produce for our team, and sometimes you get lucky and it goes over the fence. That's the political answer, folks. That is strikeout number 10 from Monica Abbott here tonight has been dominant. Gators get their first base runner. Adam stranded at second through four. Team USA by four. Top of the fifth, quick moving game here in Gainesville. Big reason why Monica Abbott has struck out 10 for the Gators, only one base runner tonight. For Gator pitching, the only blemish has been that four run third inning. I'm so glad that you can join us tonight, wherever you may be. Start of a, a new softball season, and we talked about the Clearwater Invitational coming up. You have a lot of great matchups early in the season. Before you know it, the conference play. Right, I know. I can't believe the matchups that we had an opening weekend where you had uh, Arizona versus Tennessee, Alabama versus Florida State. I feel like I'm blanking out on other ones, too. But how about the start for Alabama? ESPN poll, they were picked number one. Uh, they get a couple of losses early in the season at Florida State, one of those in dramatic fashion. Um, but there's, there's a lot of teams that certainly can contend this year for a national championship. Meanwhile, there's, there's Smiley, the, the groundskeeper, longtime groundskeeper here at Florida doing the YMCA tradition. You love me some Smiley. That's he, right. He takes <laughs> such pride in this field. He kind of calls it his field. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to agree with him. He's made this field extremely beautiful. And this place truly is beautiful. I mean, I walked in. The first thing I noticed was just the shine of the outfield grass. This... I, I totally agree with you. I thought the same thing. Yeah, right. when I, Yeah, when I went down on the field, I, I, I did not want to step on the grass. I still walked <laughs> on the dirt, the brim. It's like I, I didn't belong on there. I had to, like, get out of there quickly. Gets chewed up a little bit as the season goes along, but Smiley and his crew, they do an outstanding job. Truly some of the best groundskeepers in the country. Leading off for Team USA, Janie Reed, Michelle Moultrie, and Ali Aguilar will be due up in the away fifth. Again, that four-run third right now, the difference. Trilicek came in in relief in the fourth, got a couple of ground outs. Francesca Trilicek, truly the future of this program. Of course, the exit of Barnhill, so now... You need a, a new face of that staff, and Trilicek seems like she's up for the task. Line down the left field side, just foul. Well, to be fair, you can't replace someone like Kelly Barnhill. She was truly something special. But Riley Trilicek has the opportunity to become her own Gator great here. She has the stuff. She has the mentality. Now it's just learning as you go. And I think Coach Walton is going to be very protective of her, making sure that he doesn't throw her too much so she does not, doesn't lose her confidence early on in her freshman year, but trying to build it up and gain it so she can have a long-term success. He's always been fortunate enough in the past to have very strong senior pitchers when a strong freshman comes in, so he has always eased them into that process. I think this year her number's going to get called a little bit more than he would like, the, like to initially, but she has the goods to be great. 
Bounce back up the middle on the short hop past the glove of Reynoso into center. Second hit for Janie Reed tonight. And Coach Walton has said when he's evaluated this staff, and overall, this team's going to have to win a little bit differently this year with a little bit more offense. But he has said if our pitchers can keep the opponent two runs or under, we have a chance to, to win a lot of games. Easier said than done. He's also said we just got to keep other teams inside the ballpark. We cannot give up that crushing home run. And a lot of it's going to come back to that defense, but not just defending what's getting hit at you, being smart and looking at your spray charts before you go into that tournament, under or before you go into that series, understanding where that hitter likes to hit the ball so then you can shift defensively to take away hits and make them out. It's almost like you have to start moneyballing it a little bit more <laughs> and, and understanding your position, yeah. your positioning in the defensive perspective. Bounce to Reynoso. We'll go to first and get the out. That's a heads up play from the veteran Reynoso there. You had Reed that was going on the pitch. So no way you're going to get her out at second base, and Reynoso understands that, so she gets that easy out at first. Part of that sure-handed middle infield we talked about, Reynoso and Adams. Steps in alley, Aguilar got the scoring started with a two-run single in the third inning. It's the seventh game that Team USA has played all in the state of Florida. Soon in this month, we'll head out west. Play a few more exhibitions against Division I programs. The tour will end on June 25th in Salem, Virginia. So from February to June, this team is traveling all over playing softball, getting ready for the Olympics. Also, what's cool about it, too, they, they title it the stand beside her tour in MLB has helped out this tour as well. They, they put their logo on it to help financially with, with this team and a lot of the travel that they have to do. I think it's just cool to see the commitment that Major League Baseball has made towards softball at the youth levels and all the way up to the Olympic level. I, I agree. And one thing I don't think a lot of people know is that these ladies, they, they don't get paid a salary for playing here. They might get some compensation, but they're doing this from their pure heart for the love of the game. Lifted out towards left. Hoover back goes overhead and bangs up against the wall. That'll bring in a run easily as Reed touches home. And it is a RBI double for Ali Aguilar. Three runs driven in tonight. It's now 5-0 Team USA. I just love the simplicity in Ali Aguilar's swing. She doesn't do too much. She just gets the contact and continues to stay on plane to lift this ball up for the double. Check out how she keeps her eyes down on that pitch and follows where the ball goes with her eyes to allow her barrel to stay on that same plane. Now 10 RBI on this tour for Ali Aguilar. It's good for a team best. Aguilar, a career 411 hitter. Should say career 377 hitter, but hit 411 her senior year at Washington. Edels, Eccles will field on to first for the out. And there's now two away. This ball not hit hard over to the third baseman, Eccles. So she takes her time fielding, fielding it, knowing the speed that she has in Arioto, and gives that look to Aguilar at second to say, you're not going to third on me. <laughs> Here's now Hannah Flippen, who had a two-run single in the third. Also doubled back in the second. That was the game's first hit. Broke down the line. Nice stop by Eccles. Toss across, inning over. Nice 
finish to that stanza for number four in orange and blue. A smile for Charlotte Eccles with Team USA. One more run in the inning. One run on two hits, one left for mid five. Gators trying to get on the board. Nice sparkling play with the glove for Eccles to end the inning. Final notes of Sweet Caroline, certainly a tradition at the ballpark and a tradition at any ballpark that Monica Abbott is pitching is just strikeouts. Ten tonight, struck out the first nine to the plate, Francesca. Well, you knew she was going to come in with that high K volume 27 before stepping on the field today. And she's doing it with her with her rise ball predominantly, being able to go outside of the zone and locate that pitch has made her successful. But again, it's the velocity mixed with the spin that keeps these Gators guessing. Now has 37 strikeouts on this tour. Has it, even been a, has it even been a week yet? I don't think so. No. <laughs> Matthews strikes out, and there is K number 11. So add one more to that package we just showed you. Matthews has struck out twice tonight. And the Gator is still without a hit. Here's Julia Cottrell, the freshman. Bounce right back to Abbott. Took away the first hit of the night, most likely. She does it all, Francesca. Well, I'm going to give some love to the freshman, Juliet Cottrell. This is her second at-bat. In her first at-bat, she had a huge, big swing with the first pitch. She swings again at the first pitch, and it looked like it was going to be a single, but does not get by the veteran and Abbott. Here's now Jade Carraway. Today is Jade's birthday, correct? Yeah. Happy birthday, Jay. 22, I believe, based off of... She was singing Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift, 22. Yep. <laughs> we assume she's 22. I'm 22, too. Make that me three. Okay, good. Yeah. Some of the young softball players on hand, I'm sure just watching this in awe of Abbott's performance tonight. One of the most frustrating things as a hitter against Abbott, it's not her dominating rise ball. It's the fact that she can locate her curveball perfectly on the corner where there's barely any white on it. It's just perfectly placed where it looks like a ball, but it's a strike. Why not? A dozen Ks tonight for number 14. Incredible. Truly one of the best to ever do it. Monica Abbott, 12 strikeouts tonight, putting on his show in front of a packed crowd in Gainesville.
Certainly a celebration of the sport tonight. Team USA in town, and they lead 5-0. A four-run third inning anchoring their lead right now for the Florida Gators. New hurler inside the circle. Sophomore Danny Farley. Gators hope to get her going in her sec get her career going in her second year. Had a rough go of it in her freshman season. Again, it's part of the depth, Francesca, that Coach Walton has tried to build within this starting rotation. And Danny Farley, a chance to see some of the best to do it tonight. You know, like we said earlier on, Coach Walton is looking for all five pitchers to possibly see time in one game. Farley's already thrown three innings on this season. But just like you said, she's looking to try to strengthen her game. She needs to be crisper with her location. And she's someone that likes to work side to side, heavy on her curveball. She has a backdoor as well. But when she gets into trouble, she leaves it over the heart of the plate a little too often. Farley did not see a ton of time in SEC play last year. Again, most of those innings dominated by Kelly Barnhill and at times Elizabeth Hightower, who we have not seen tonight. Amanda Chittister leads off the Team USA sixth inning. But I also thought there was a lot to like from Riley Trilicek tonight, the freshman. Inning in two thirds, two hits, one run. And those are those type of little moments that someone like a freshman in Tril Trilicek needs to build off of. And remember, remember that feeling and remember how she located and how she was able to get that successes in order to be successful the rest of the season. Crowd wanted a strikeout. And this pitch was pretty close on the inside corner and just runs inside on Chittister. That's a good job of holding up and feeling that it's too inside. Out, in. You can hear Coach Wallen yelling out where that pitch missed. And that misses for ball four, so a leadoff base runner. First time for Chittister on base tonight. And that brings in Aubrey Monroe. Coach Wallen always vocal in that dugout. Well, well, also they made a switch defensively and brought in Cottrell behind the plate. She's a freshman, so this is her first time being on the field, being on the home field right now defensively. And so Coach Wong is trying to get her understanding what the flow needs to be, what kind of verbal talk that he wants constantly. And soon enough when she starts becoming more familiar with that position and understands the flow of what Coach wants, like she's going to know exactly how to deliver the message and what to say. Coach Walton had mentioned that with some of the, the new leaders emerging that Julia Cottrell was even one of the more vocal players during the fall and the, and the practices leading up to the start of the season. He just said it's hard for a freshman sometimes to get that message across because you are a freshman. And it comes back to that experience factor. If you have a junior or senior looking at a freshman asking, you know, you're going to tell me what to do, you're going to try to lead. But she's someone that behind the plate that is very vocal and just excited every pitch she's in at every moment. This one gets away. Bubba Nichols coming in to pinch run. UCLA standout. One of four Bruins on this roster. Part of the youth movement of Team USA. Redshirting her final year at UCLA. I think they said the average age is 20, 26 on the team. 26 and a half, 26 I think. And they th half, throw yeah. the half in there. Someone must have a half birthday coming up. It's a few ticks below the 08 Beijing team in terms of average age. But how about the, the up-and-comers, kind of the new generation, I guess, for Team USA? You have Rachel Garcia, Deja Mulipola, who's the catcher at Arizona, and, and Bubba Nichols for UCLA. And I love it. It just shows how much our sport is growing, that you don't have to rely on 
you know, some of the older names that you have this big surge of the youth and, and they've been waiting for this, Kyle. They've been waiting for this moment to be able to bring that medal back, to compete for it. And this is special because just like you said, there is not, softball won't be in the Olympics in 2024. We, they, yeah. didn't make, they didn't make the cut. Snap throw that gets into center field be a walk to Monroe. So it's now first and second. All worlds of danger for Danny Forley. Still nobody out in the sixth. I'm gonna see the aggressiveness from the freshman Cockrell behind the plate, trying to help her pitch her out to catch Nichols sleeping at second. I think you're gonna see that a lot from her when we talk about that vocal leader. She's just exciting to watch. And this year, Cottrell will most likely split time with Jordan Roberts behind home plate. And with all of that, that log jam at catcher, now you move Kendall Lindemann from behind home plate and playing a lot of first base this year for Tim Walton. You know, he even said it in his uh, opening season press conference. He feels like he's got 11 starters right now. And he needs to find out who's going to be that mainstay at each position. One, two to Stewart. Swing and a miss, and Farley picks up a strikeout. It's a big one here in the sixth. Yeah, Farley getting her first strikeout of this game while she's in some trouble with runners on base. She's able to get that strikeout because she stayed away and away and low from Stewart. And then that last pitch, Stewart just couldn't get her hands extended on it. Circle back to the top of the lineup for Haley McClenney. Been on base once and scored in that four run third. Of course, played for Patrick Murphy. And you think about the, the great programs in the SEC the last decade, it's truly been Florida and Alabama. And then they've alternated who's won the regular season title. Last year it was all Alabama. Gets past Cottrell, runners move up. He's second and third with one out. Yeah, Haley McClenney is someone I just absolutely love to watch play softball. She treats the game the right way. She brings all this energy to it as you see this wild pitch from Farley that advances the runners. Now you have two in scoring position. But going back to McClenney, she was someone that you knew when she graduated at Alabama, she was going to be on Team USA. And if we made it back into the Olympics, of course she was going to be that leadoff batter because of the energy she brings every time she puts on a uniform. Patrick Murphy had a quote about Haley McClenney saying that she reminds me of the same way that Cal Ripken played shortstop. Just the fact that Haley covers so much ground that anything in her area she's going to catch. And there's actually a picture of her on the wall in Rhodes Stadium out near center field of, of her making a headlong diving catch. So, you know, her time at Alabama lives forever. It's on the wall there in Rhodes Stadium. Such an incredible defender out in center. You know, she started her career off too just being the small ball hitter, but then developed all this power. This is off the plate to McClenney. Bases are loaded. Third walk in the inning for Farley. Well, we said that Farley struggles because she leaves the ball over the plate a little bit too much, and she's trying to combat that right now by being too careful and missing too big. Pinch hitter coming in in the two spot, Ali Carta, one of the four UCLA Bruins on this roster. Pinch hit for Jeannie Reed, who had a pair of singles and scored twice. Tag go one, two, three, whatever you need. Carta, part of the, one of many versatile pieces on this roster. Play the infield, can pitch. 
pitching coach at Cal Poly from 2015 to 2019. And another two-time All-American. You know, she was someone that when she played at UCLA, I, I thought there was a few years that she could have led her team to a national championship because just how dominant in the circle she was in a gamer. Very competitive, just professional, would toe the line and could take you. Now brings in Elizabeth Hightower. We mentioned when Kelly Barnhill did not throw last year in SEC games, it was Elizabeth Hightower who had the opportunity to start some games in her freshman year, was on the SEC All-Freshman team. One start that really stands out at a complete game shutout against Arkansas also came in in relief against a Tennessee volunteer team early in the year. And Tennessee was, I mean, they were firing on all cylinders offensively. Was able to throw five shutout innings in relief of that game. So she's had a lot of bright spots early as Hightower. Much like Lugo, here this year we'll have to take a bigger step. You know, I think even her success that she had last season surprised herself and surprised the pitching staff. I don't think they looked at her having that big of a role early on in her career, but she stepped up to the challenge and succeeded. And I think she's someone that if the Gators want to make it deep into postseason play, she's going to have to be a, a big part of that. Had a couple of appearances this weekend against Fresno State and Michigan. And a member of the SEC All-Freshman team last year was 3-1 and one in SEC play with a 1-7-4 ERA. The base is loaded. What a tough stop back there for the freshman, Cottrell, trying to keep that wild pitch in front of her when you have someone on third base. That's just a tough thing to do, especially freshmen. And in case you're just joining us, the story, the show, Monica Abbott. 12 strikeouts. Bounce sharply towards third. Eccles steps on the back, throws across, double play. Pitcher's best friend, Elizabeth Hightower, comes in, gets the 5-3 DP, and Team USA leaves them loaded. It's been a good defensive night for Sharla Eccles. There's one, there's two. Inning over. Good crowd here tonight for the unofficial home opener for the Florida Gators exhibition matchup with Team USA. Gators will take on North Florida tomorrow. And there you see Monica Abbott. Her night is done, but what a night it was. Did not give up a hit. 12 strikeouts. Just pure dominance, and it's what we've become accustomed to as you see the numbers there for Monica Abbott. And I think that's what you expected, honestly, coming to this coming to the game today was that dominant performance with someone like Monica Abbott. She really takes a lot of pride in her craft and if she goes a game without getting letting any hits up, you know that she's feeling good about herself. From one of the all-time greats to one of what 
Down the line could be one of the all-time greats in Rachel Garcia, back-to-back -back USA Softball Player of the Year. Redshirting this year, part of that young core for Team USA. Won a national title last year. Pretty much did it all for UCLA en route to that national title. Reynoso clocks this one well fell. I was just going to say, I don't know what award Garcia did not get last year. She was the World Series MVP. She got the game-winning walk-off hit to send to the championship series. Just a fun player to watch last year and to watch lead her team to a national championship. And, and yeah, did so in the circle and in the batter's box. Again, a part of that versatility that Ken Erickson was trying to bring to this roster when he dwindled down those 29 players during tryouts to 15 in October. Defensive change for Team USA. This one softly lined foul. Bubba Nichols, teammate of Rachel Garcia, now in at third. You have Ali Carta now in left. And the rest remains the same. Pretty cool to have your teammate, if you're Garcia, right to your right at third base. You get that comfortability factor. Kind of forget what who you're pitching against and what the stakes are on the line when you can just look and see your teammate and think, this is just like we do at practice. Pretend you're back in LA. <laughs> It was Rachel Garcia that actually broke the news to UCLA teammate Bubba Nichols that they were both on Team USA. Just got a text from Rachel saying, so proud of you. She was just sitting there doing her homework. All of a sudden, you know, you have text messages pop up on the, on the MacBook. From Rachel Garcia saying, I'm so proud of you. Just like that, they were both Olympians. And imagine the experience they're going to take back next year when they rejoin their UCLA team. They get to bring back this Olympic experience. That's got to be fun for UCLA knowing what's coming back next year. I mean, a sure run to at least the World Series. That's just how dominant Rachel Garcia is. Truly can become that next Monica Abbott or Kat Osterman. Soft pop fly. Caught by Arioto. Gators still without a hit tonight. And if you remember two years ago, the final three, I believe it was, for USA Softball Player of the Year, Rachel Garcia and Amanda Lorenz were, were both in that final three. And it was Rachel Garcia who won it two years ago and won it last year. But laid down by Cheyenne Lindsay out in front of home, no play, no hitter, no more. Well, Lindsay doing something that no Gator has done is not only just getting the first hit, but relying on the small ball, seeing where the defense was playing them, taking the first pitch she got and placing this butt down beautifully. You see her footwork, you see how it just continues to tap, and you know at that point you have no chance. Yeah. At the point of when the catcher Monroe picks up the ball, you know Lindsay's going to be safe at first. Wanted to get your thoughts on this too, because I saw this opening weekend, but Hannah Adams' stance is much more wide open than it was last year. Talk with hitting coach Eric Thomas about it, and he said, it's just to allow her to not bail out her hips through the swing, to, to stay level through the swing, but it's much more wide open than it was last year.
but allows her to stay in her legs more and to stay in her legs longer. So she's not doing so much of a far reaching swing, but being able to maintain that, at that athleticism and try to gain as much rotation in her lower half as possible. It's become truly an extreme open stance. Did have an open stance last year, just, just nothing quite like that. Well, you see her just get down lower in those legs. So she's not necessarily squatting, but you can see her legs almost like internally rotated. So then that way when she does fire, she's not fishing with her bat. She's able to maintain the strength in her lower half and allowing those big, strong muscle groups to kind of take control of the swing. Not your hands, the smaller ones. Right. And I think if there's one player that's due for a breakout year, I believe it's Hannah Adams as she took this one off the back foot that time. I just laid on that pitch, and that's why he went on her back foot and not her front foot. And she's always been someone that's been consistent, almost under the radar consistent. Occasionally has come up with big hits, but it seems like she's always getting on base when they need someone to get on base. But again, she is someone that the Gators need to almost get on every game <laughs> if they want to try to compete at the level that they've had in previous years. Now hitting in that leadoff spot where she was most of her freshman year. Last year was a little bit different because the Gators had Lorenz and Lindemann one and two, and Adams most times would hit third. 2-2, parachuted in the air towards left center. It's McClenny under it. And there is two away. Certainly seeing a lot better swings this time around here against Rachel Garcia than what we saw against Monica Abbott. Well, some of these players have faced Garcia before in the past. I mean, like we said, she's still playing collegiately. She's still in that collegiate pool. She's redshirting this season. And this is her second year redshirting, actually. She came in her freshman season and yep. had an injury. So she had to take a, a, an injury redshirt, now taking the redshirt so she can compete with Team USA. She's going to be one of those players that just feels like she's been on the collegiate field for a long time. Yeah. If you're a rival in the Pac-12, you just can never seem to, to get rid of Rachel Garcia. Yeah. Pitched against the Gators in the World Series two years ago. It was a 6-5 Bruin win. And that was a heartbreaker for Florida because they hopped out to a four-run lead in that game. And then it was six unanswered for UCLA. There was a whole controversial play at the plate and all that, but we won't get into that. Lindemann drills his deep left center field, way back and way gone. Kendall Lindemann gets the Gators on the board. It's now five to two. And that's the kind of hit that these Gator fans wanted to see. This just electrified the stadium with that big home run from Kendall Lindemann. You take a look at this hit, she gets a little jam, but because she gets on plane, she's able to get those hands extended. You see her stay on that pitch, and just because of that extra click of extension, that ball goes right over the fence. An absolute laser beam from Kendall Lindemann. And when you see Kendall Lindemann swing, she, she has a lot of home runs, she has a lot of power, but her swing does not look like a home run swing. It is short, it is compact, but because of the strength that she has in her body and because of how long she can stay on plane and how quickly she gets on plane, she produces those line drive hits. High fly ball here from Sharla Eccles. McClenny's under it, and that will end the inning. The Gators will not be shut out here tonight. They go to their main power source, Kendall Lindemann. A no-doubter out to left center field. A true laser beam from the Minnesota transfer. Florida Trails now 5-2.
Gators getting their first two hits of the night off of Rachel Garcia coming in the sixth inning. Highlighted by a two-run home run from Kendall Lindemann. 5-2 Team USA. And Francesca, this crowd has been waiting to erupt all night and finally had something to cheer about for the home team. Now, of course, it's going to come from a home run. That's what we all <laughs> like to see, right? But I liked how the execution happened. It was a bunt from from Cheyenne Lindsay to get things started, just to kind of get some momentum. And then you have the big home run from Lindemann that was able to get that run in. But so you talk about short short game and then being able to get on the board with the big hit. So now Team USA trying to add some insurance here in the final scheduled frame. It's Michelle Moultrie to lead it off. How about Hightower coming in? And the base is loaded, able to Use a 5-3 double play. Grounded sharply to Reynoso. Has it on two hops. One away. So this again, certainly a long journey for Team USA on the stand beside her tour. 35 cities, over 70 games, six months, over 18,000 miles they will travel. Play five NCAA Division I programs. There's no doubt they will be ready for day one of the Olympics. And yeah, man, it seems like they have been training for the Olympics for about two years now, two, three years. I mean, a lot of these girls, they kind of knew that they, they were going to make the, the team, make the squad, and they've just had their head down and just grinding. What kind of pressure do you think they feel as a collective unit because, again, softball has not been in the Olympics since 2008, might not be back in the Olympics until 2028. How much pressure do you think they feel to win that gold medal? I think it's something that, that pops in their mind, but the best don't feel the pressure. They know the obstacles that are against them and they know what they're facing, but in order to be the best and succeed, you can't think about that kind of stuff. Of course they want to bring that gold medal home, but they just have to think about getting to Tokyo and taking it one pitch at a time, stepping up into that field and looking at that uh, that opponent. Again, we mentioned the field that they will play. There are no easy games in the Olympics this year. Who do you think, and we talked a little bit about it, do you think it's Japan? Do you think it's United States 1, Japan 2 going into the Olympics, how would you rank? I don't want to put you on the spot. You can tell the truth, whatever you think. Oh, man. I, you know, I don't know. I, yeah. I really don't. I, I think that, you know, the work ethic of Team Japan can never go unnoticed. The experience that they have. The fact that they get to play high quality and competitive softball year round because of the Japan Professional League. That's a huge advantage point that they have as well. But then again, you know, you have Team Mexico and Team Canada that when I see the work that they're putting in, it seems scary if you are rooting for Team USA. A lot of those national teams, they are playing in the MPF this summer to help them get ready before going to Tokyo. So to make sure that they're constantly playing against tough competition. That's one way that they're trying to combat what the Japan League has. Yanked the third off the glove of Eccles. Aguilar stays put at second. So Arioto will reach. We'll see how they score that. And that's a tough play to make as an infielder. You see Eccles is already playing back because the power Ariota has. And this ball just eats her up as she is falling forward. So not being able to try to collect it in an athletic position forces that error. They will give a hit to Arioto. Did have one error early in this game that went to Kelsey Stewart. Would be a coin flip again. I thought she would get the home cooking tonight, being a former Florida Gator. I guess if you're not in orange and blue, you don't get any home cooking. 
That's right. <laughs> the home cooking's over. And a flipping blast this foul. But overall, Francesca, certainly just a celebration uh, of the sport tonight. We've seen just how quick this sport has continued to grow with how much ESPN has invested into televising these the sports. I mean, the amount of games that are being televised on linear, nonlinear platforms this year, truly, you never thought that could be a, th a thing a couple of years ago. As Hightower picks up a strikeout, Flippin goes down on strikes. Just the expansion of the coverage of the World Series, the, the coverage of, of even the SEC tournament, the amount of work they put into covering that event, it, it's truly, it, it's nice to see the growth of the sport and, and how much, you know, how much more it's been televised over the last couple of years through ESPN. It's just every year we continue to break records, whether it's the records that are broken of attendance at the Women's College World Series or the viewership records being broken of, you know, people wanting to watch college softball over college baseball. And it's not just the talent that is continuing to become or pr produce, but it's the emotions that go into it. People love watching college softball because of the heart that is laid out on the lines and how easy it is to read that type of heart and that passion. Meanwhile, Francesca, I do need to give you some redemption because they, they turned that Arioto, what they originally called a hit, to an error. Don't you know I'm always right, Kyle? <laughs> this is the third year working with me. <laughs> you are always correct. <laughs> Just ask my husband. He knows that. He's learned that, yeah. <laughs> Two and two to Bubba Nichols. Line foul. That's ball four, bases loaded once again. And it will be Aubrey Monroe to step to the plate. You know, I feel like we see a lot of moments where the Gator pitching staff can get a little bit better. And then that one instance, that's a, that's a at-bat that you can't let that batter go. You had her working, you had her fouling off a lot of your good pitches. And so you can't let her go that easily away with the walk. You got to toe up and, you know, and figure out a way to get her out and get your team out of this inning. Is that a confidence thing that if, if I try and throw my best stuff over the plate that I don't think I can get a swing and miss? Is it a confidence thing for a pitcher? I think it's being confident in your location and knowing how and trusting your pitches. Knowing what you put in the bullpen and what you're putting in work there and getting it to trans transfer over into live game. And when you can have that confidence, then you're not thinking about the obstacles that are against you of what if I leave it out over the plate or what if I do this. You put in all that extra work in practice so then when you get to the game, it just happens naturally and it all comes between, between your head or what's going on yeah. in your head. You have to be mentally tough as a pitcher because it's tough. Like that's a beautiful location from Hightower right there on that inside corner. That's where she needs to live and, and remember what that feels like so she can hit that spot again. Monroe just gets a piece. And you wonder if Monroe rips one into the gap if the Florida Gator fans give her a standing ovation. She is the, she is the opponent tonight, but two-time national champion. And she's hard, she's hard not to love, Aubrey Benro. <laughs> 
Aubrey Monroe, somebody who was just a, a notorious worker. Incredibly hardworking. Popped up. Foul ground. Echoes over. The call and the catch. Inning over. Second time tonight. Team USA has left. The base is loaded. Last chance to dance for Florida. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Team USA by three. Last chance for the Florida Gators here on a beautiful night in Gainesville. Home opener for the Florida Gators. Team USA, five runs on six hits. Gators, two runs on two hits, both coming off of Rachel Garcia tonight. Well, for Team USA, it'll be the third pitcher inside the circle. It's Kehlani Ricketts, former Oklahoma Sooner, on the roster as a replacement player, one of three replacement players, in addition to the 15 on the regular roster. But an outstanding left-hander, won back-to-back -back USA Softball Player of the Year awards in 2012 and 2013. Four-time All-American, and certainly somebody who was dominant in her college career. Yeah, Kehlani Rickett, she's another tough pitcher to face. Just to think that she's an alternate is just crazy because of how good she is. She coined the term crop duster. That's with her drop curveball that she has. Michelle Smith created that. Yeah. yeah. So this crowd trying to get this offense going tonight. Much like the crowd we saw to open up KDC Show Presley Stadium, the, the renovated KDC Show Presley Stadium last year against Team Japan. It'll be Roberts, Matthews, and Cottrell against Ricketts. Defensive change as well. You have Rachel Garcia who's pitching in the last inning now at first. And tomorrow the Gators have to turn the page, get back to the regular season in North Florida and then uh, host a tournament this weekend. So angle fell. That's what you get early in the year in non-conference play. You just you play a ton of games, double headers day after day. It can wear on you early in the season. It can, but there's just so much excitement just to finally start season <laughs> that you, you're actually happy that you get to play a lot of games. And then come conference play, you're ready to go. You're ready to compete. I guess that's what the 6 a.m. conditioning is for, right, for all these players who play so many games. You know, it's, 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 it's true. It's so important to have that type of conditioning because it's a long season, and you need to make sure that you're just as fresh in May than you are as in, in February. And for some, this Florida program has some different expectations, at least externally this year. We're picked fifth in the SEC. 
But it's funny, they were picked top 10 in the preseason top 25, but fifth within the SEC. Good at bat here from Jordan Roberts. Well, because Ricketts likes to keep that ball low, likes to work side to side, it's hard to lift something off of her. She loves to also throw her change up. She just battles out there in the circle and knows how to keep those batters off balance. But Jordan just continues to fight every pitch that's coming from Ricketts. Off speed upstairs, ball four. Will be Bailey Goddard, the freshman, who homered over the weekend. Pinch hit for Jordan Matthews, who finished up 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. And E.C. Taylor will pinch run over at first for Jordan Roberts. Now, Bailey Goddard is someone that Coach Walton said has the ability to make a big impact. He's one, she's one of those, I have strong 11 players right now that could be starters. And that first month, we said there's a lot of games, but you use that first month to try to figure out what is, who are those mainstays going to be. You know, you plug them in, pinch hitting opportunities. Maybe they start another game, but just trying to give everyone the opportunity to show why they should be in that starting nine. Goddard, somebody who played infield in her high school career, moved to the outfield here at Florida. First career home run against Georgia State this weekend was a three-run shot. Ricketts that time pulled the string. Just tough to come off the bench cold, especially off of Kaylani Ricketts. You see this change up and it just fools Goddard. Tries to hold up basically once the swing was over. Fools her again for the strikeout. It will be the freshman Julia Cottrell here with one out in the seventh. Cottrell had one of the harder hit balls in play at least, a comebacker to Monica Abbott who made a nice play. Not sure it would have made it into the outfield, but it was sharply hit. And she's shown no, no fear in her at-bats, even taking that first hack off of Ricketts there. It's kind of a weird looking swing because of the movement that Ricketts has. You could tell that she was just trying to quickly make up for where the ball was going within her hands. This gets away, E.C. Taylor has a ton of speed, easily down to second. E.C. Taylor, she doesn't fully get square towards the catcher, and because of that, when she reads ball in the dirt, she's able to be safe easily at second. Another defensive change as well. Taylor Edwards behind home plate. Say that did not clip Cottrell. Three and one. There's Hannah Edwards. Taylor Edwards, rather, from Nebraska. As Cottrell works a walk, two on, one out. Another pinch hitter coming in, Bryn Thomas. And Ken Erickson 
could be going to the lineup card here. Possible pitching change, re-entry of Rachel Garcia. Inside the circle. You see Erickson just didn't like that Ricketts was giving up way more balls than, than being able to throw strikes. So he wants to bring in Garcia back to try to get the team, Team USA, out of this inning and finish this game up and close the door. Now you have the tying run coming to the plate here with Bryn Thomas. So certainly this game has the ability to get really exciting here in the final half inning. Garcia came in in the sixth inning, pitched it and in, gave up a couple of hits, a two-run home run to Kendall Lindemann. Let's go back to that home run in the sixth off the bat of Kendall Lindemann. Great swing that time, Francesca. I just love how simple Lindemann's swing is. She doesn't try to do too much. Again, it's just because she gets on that swing plane so fast and stays on it so long that, that she's this one out somebody who's used to late inning pressure situations most outstanding player last year in the women's college world series en route to a national title as Hannah Saipos comes in to pinch run at first for Julia Cottrell Also here too, Francesca, Coach Walton in that third base coach's box, always, always talking, always in the ear of the hitter. One thing you'll notice though is when he's talking and he's in their ear, he is not giving them mechanical adjustments. He's just trying to remind them of some of their cues of, you know, stay through the middle, stay strong, see the bottom. Just simple cues to try to keep them in their strength and their swing. one lands foul the moment you start shouting out mechanical adjustments or you know put your hands here or throw here or do this with your back foot yeah. all of a sudden that player is going to get in their head and they're going to forget what they practiced save all that stuff for the batting cage exactly Clocked on a line, left center field. That's down for a base hit all the way towards the wall. Taylor scores, Saipo stops at third. A ribby double for Bryn Thomas. It's now 5-3. Bryn Thomas making this game extra interesting right now with the stand-up double. You're just fighting this entire at bat and she gets a pitch that is pretty sweet that is middle outside and you can even tell she doesn't even get the ball on the sweet spot she gets slightly jammed but has enough strength and enough lower half to put this out to the fence Bryn Thomas last year red shirted a red shirt freshman this year the smoke that one into the gap. And here is Ken Erickson back inside the circle. Guess who's getting warm? Monica Abbott possibly could re-enter into this game. Tying runs in scoring position. Bet when this game was 5-0, you didn't think this could be a possibility in the bottom of the seventh. Well, especially with how dominant Monica Abbott was in those first five innings, you take a look at that line, 12 Ks, zero walks, zero hits. You know, Ken Erickson, he is the pitching coach for Team USA, so he, he understands what he has in his staff, and he knows that when he's seen something that's different 
from them. Like maybe, maybe they need to bring in a new pitcher just like they did for Ricketts. She walked those two batters and immediately brought in Garcia. So maybe he's thinking, you know, if, if Garcia falls behind a batter, I need to bring in my ace and Abbott. So Abbott remains warming up in the bullpen. And you have a couple of Palmdale, California natives getting set to square off in this matchup, Reynoso against Garcia. Have you ever been to Palmdale? I have not. There's not much there. You grew up close to Palmdale, correct? Like two hours, I guess that's close. Yeah, it's close yeah. enough. <laughs> it's a big country. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, there's not much in Palmdale, so no doubt that they have been facing each other since they were yeah. 10 U, probably. Well, Ken Erickson is making all his defensive adjustments. Monica Abbott is heading back towards the dugout. Valerie Arioto will head to first. Ricketts will come off. A lot of paperwork being done right now here in the seventh. You just think that he wants to try to bring in some defensive replacements. And yeah. if they do switch pitchers, do we need to bring in Aubrey Monroe back to catch? Is Aubrey Monroe's Abbott's only catcher? And Abbott remains in the dugout, and now she will head out. It looks like Monroe will come back to catch. You know, we kind of mentioned it earlier that Abbott is someone who, stickler to her routine, does not like things to be changed up often. Yeah. And that, that is the same thing with her catcher. She always likes to make sure she is throwing to her catcher, her number one, and that is Aubrey Monroe. And she certainly earned that personal catcher. So now Monica Abbott, who, if you're just joining us, five innings, no hits, no walks, 12 strikeouts in her start. Team USA built a 5 nothing lead through five innings. The Gators... There are three runs, two of two of those coming in the sixth, and then a ribby double from the redshirt freshman Bryn Thomas has made this a 5-3 game, so the Gators have the tying runs in scoring position. And now Monica Abbott trying to close the door, Gators two outs to play with. And if you're the Gators, you have someone up to bat that can cause some damage. You know, I, I mentioned a few times in the game how tough it is to hit Monica Abbott, but it's extremely tough if you're a lefty. That lefty on lefty matchup, I've only seen one person consistently be successful off of Mount Abbott as a lefty, and that's been Natasha Watley. So being able that you have Reynoso, a righty hitter, a short compact swing, she could get enough of this ball to tie this game up. So that will be the final warm-up toss here for Monic Abbott. Not sure how many tosses she needs tonight after again throwing five innings. Gators have the number eight hitter in Reynoso up. Cheyenne Lindsay looming on deck who had the Gators first hit with an infield bunt single off of Rachel Garcia. And now a little bit of intrigue and drama here in the bottom of the seventh. And the Gators try and tie this game against one of the nation's best. Hey, that's what we want for the home opener, right? That's Let's right. Let's bring the drama. Let's bring the home runs. So we have had a seven minute layoff since the last pitch thrown in this game and make it seven and change. We got a timeout here. I think our viewers just love hearing us talk. <laughs> We're doing a talk show up here. I think it's we, pretty yeah, good. Put I, us I on think, the radio. I think so too. Now, let's, let's see what else is on the docket. She should throw away her, her gun. Okay. What did I, stickler for the routine, Kyle. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And you can't just dump the gum on Smiley's field either. No, you, you cannot. can't do that. That's just very disrespectful. <laughs> Especially after we did the YMCA. All right, here we go. 
Tying runs in scoring position. Ball one. That's a good pitch to take if you're Reynoso. That is placed perfectly on the inside corner. If you're not sitting and expecting that, you can't get your hands extended. Just take that pitch. Heavy swing and a miss. One and two. This is where you really have to try to see that ball down from Abbott. You know she's going to try to go upstairs, maybe paint it on the outside corner with the curveball. Just look down, look down. Lucky number 13. 13 Ks for number 14. And there's two away. Gators down to their final out. Abbott doing what she does best with that rise ball. And it is such a deceptive pitch because of that spin. As you see, it just floats up right as it crosses Reynoso's chest. No chance she's going to make contact. Now it's up to Jamie Hoover re-entered into the nine spot. Cheyenne Lindsay pinch hit for her in the sixth. Jamie Hoover have some more late inning heroics. Of course, game three against Tennessee, the Super Regional round, a walk off to send the Gators to their third straight Women's College World Series. That's a good pitch from Abbott. I'm surprised Hoover did not swing at that pitch based off of where that last one was located. Off the plate again, three and one. They try to appeal, they do. Hoover did not go around. We talk about the control that Abbott has. Two pitches ago, that's a strike on the outside corner, and now she's inch by inch trying to get the swing and miss from Hoover, but the patience of Hoover is being shown. Swing and a miss, and it's now three and two. Heavy cut that time from Hoover. Gators down to their final strike. And Abbott's not gonna walk you. She doesn't wanna walk you, so you know 3-1, she's coming something big. Just off the plate outside, base is loaded. Now it's up to the top of the lineup in Hannah Adams. The winning run is at first. If that pitch missed, it didn't miss by much. Well, how about this spot, Hannah Adams? So cool, calm, and collected. I don't think Monica Abbott is flustered right now in this moment. And she's a veteran. She's kind of been through it all, so she knows how to persevere through the tough times. Gators down to their final strike. 0-2, Abbott has the old, whole arsenal to work with here. Gators mounting a rally late. Two and two. And that's a good take. That's the first time we've seen a strong rise ball take from these Gator batters.
2 2. Fouled away. I love to see this kind of fight from the Gators this late in the game. And you might even think if you can if you can battle against Monica Abbott, if you can lay off that rise ball from Abbott, you're setting yourself up for, for a good successful rest of the season. Just got a piece, adding to the drama here in the seventh. A long AB from the Gator second baseman. Just, just, just keeping it short, just keeping it short, trying to get to contact. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded, Gators trail by two. Abbott deals. Downstairs, ball three. No place to put Hannah Adams. Tying run at second. Line drive, rips right center field, that's caught. McClenny in, makes the grab, the Gators rally, but fall short and leave the bases loaded. Team USA holds on for a 5-3 victory over the Florida Gators. What a night it was here tonight at KSP. You knew you were going to be facing from some extremely tough pitching, but Gators did a great job hanging in and making the adjustments as this game progressed, especially if you look at the first five innings against Abbott, 12 strikeouts, and then her coming in and trying to get something started and trying to finish it. But unfortunately, the winning the, the win goes to Team USA. So Team USA now 7-0 on this stand beside her tour. A homecoming for three Florida Gators in Aubrey Monroe, Kelsey Stewart, and Michelle Moultrie. It was a fun night. Team USA, five runs, six hits, one error. Gators, three runs, three hits, and one error. Gators resume action tomorrow against North Florida here at KSP. But tonight, a celebration of the sport as this team gets set to head to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Here in Gainesville for our entire crew, my broadcast partner Francesca Nea, I'm Kyle Crook saying so long and good night here from Gainesville.